Hi there, this is Koshik Ranchad, immigration attorney representing clients throughout the 50 states. Welcome to our weekly immigration show. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the I-601 waiver and what it can do for you. So you'll wanna stay tuned. I'm gonna tie this into a success story so you can learn more. So make sure you stay tuned. And if you haven't already, smash that like button because it does help other people like you stay informed because it affects the YouTube algorithm. Now on to it. The I-601A waiver, that we talk a lot about, that is primarily for people who have entered the United States if you entered without a visa and you've accrued unlawful presence, then you're subject to a three or 10 year bar if you were to leave the United States, that's what the I-601A waiver cures. So it's that I-601A waiver is geared towards curing the unlawful presence, but it doesn't address other grounds of inadmissibility, and that's why you may need an I-601 waiver. The I-601 waiver can cure fraud or misrepresentation. It can also cure certain types of criminal issues. So the I-601 waiver covers other grounds of inadmissibility that the I-601A waiver may not cure. So the I-601 waiver was in existence before the I-601A waiver and then the I-601A waiver was created so you wouldn't have to leave the United States. But if you're already outside the United States, then you could apply for the I-601 waiver. The nice thing about the I-601A waiver is you know whether or not your waiver is gonna get approved before you leave. Let's look at the processing times for the I-601 waiver. Currently processing times for the I-601 waiver are 11 months. Now let's compare that to the I-601A. The I-601A, as I'm shooting this video, is taking 26 and a half months in Nebraska, so a little over two years. And in the Potomac Service Center, it's taking 34 and a half months. This is an excessive amount of time. I'm hoping the processing times are going to come down. This is a very long amount of time that is due to COVID and also mismanagement that was even happening before COVID. However, the Biden administration has indicated that they do want to bring processing times down, so I'm hoping that will change. But that's what it is right now. So you can see the I-601 at least is taking a shorter amount of time than the I-601A. Let's talk about the processing of a case if you're outside of the United States. So in this situation, you would file the I-130 immediate relative petition in the United States, and then once that is approved, if it gets approved, it would go on to the National Visa Center. Um, in the I-130 immediate relative petition, you need to demonstrate that you have the real relationship. That's part of what you need to prove in that petition. So for instance, if you're married, you need to prove that you actually have a bona fide marriage. Once that is proven, then you go on to the National Visa Center process. At the National Visa Center process, you have certain forms that you need to complete, such as the affidavit of support. That can actually be a tricky form depending upon your situation. The affidavit of support where it is demonstrating that your US citizen or lawful permanent resident is able to support you financially if you were gonna go on public benefits. So it's making a contract basically with the government. That I-864 is in a sense a contract. Now, not only that, there's the DS-260 forms plus other documentation that you need to submit. After the NVC processes the application, then you'll finally be scheduled for an interview. Now, if you're outside the United States, they will deny your case. And once your case is denied, then you'll be able to apply for the I-601 waiver. After your I-601 waiver is approved, then you'll be able to return to the United States. So let's look at a success story and how we got a case approved. As I mentioned earlier, you might be wondering, well, why can't I file an I-601A waiver for fraud? Well, that's because that I-601A waiver doesn't cover that ground of inadmissibility. In this case, our client was previously in the United States. They were here on a non-immigrant visa and they were charged, unfortunately, with fraud. The client then returned to India. After the client returned to India, we were retained for the I-601 waiver. And that is where we were able to demonstrate through extreme hardship that the client should be able to re-enter the United States. In a fraud case or a misrepresentation case, just like in an I-601A case, discussing the extreme hardship is extremely important and making that argument is extremely important. That way we do this is in a very detailed legal brief. 
And here, the way we were able to make those arguments was based off of medical hardship to the U.S. citizen spouse. Not only did we talk about the medical hardship, but we also talked about the mental health issues that were caused by the separation. Now, it's not just mere separation, so it has to be a standard higher than a mere separation. And we were able to take it to the next level and demonstrate that this client was actually suffering more than just mere separation. And we also argued mental health hardship. Mental health hardship is something in order to qualify needs to be more than just mere separation. So in this case, the client was going through a mental health hardship that was more than just the pains that you would go through if you were separated. And to me and you, if we were separated from our spouse, our loved one, to us, that would be mental hardship, but not to USCIS. It needs to be a level higher than just the pain of mere separation. And in this case, the client was going through that, so we were able to demonstrate that as well. We also addressed the fraud issues and how some of the assertions that were made were not valid. And by making all of those arguments, we were able to get the case approved. In this case, there was also a lesser component of financial hardship, so we were also able to make that argument as well. We were able to add that as one of the factors of hardship. So you can see that we used a variety of hardships. And in this case, if you have a situation where you were charged for fraud or misrepresentation, and for instance, if you're married to a U.S. citizen spouse, you may be eligible to still get a waiver and overcome that separation that you may be going through. You wanna make sure that you prepare a very detailed argument about all of the hardships because that's the basis of your case and you wanna make sure you get it right because you're gonna be waiting 11 months. That doesn't get approved. You may have to start all over or you may not be able to start all over. So I invite you to contact us to learn more about whether or not you qualify, whether or not this is a good choice for you. And if you have additional questions, let us know. And you are amazing for just taking the time to better yourself. By bettering yourself, you're bettering your family. By bettering your family, you are bettering our country. Bye for now.